Hello friends, this video on natural resources part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now since the plants need so much of minerals and nutrients for its growth, now these days for commercial purposes just to increase the yield of the crop or to increase the productivity of the crops, what is done? Some additional chemicals are used in agriculture to enhance the food production. So to artificially increase the production of food, what is done? Some extra chemicals are used in agriculture. For example, the insecticides, pesticides, fertilizers, all of these are additionally applied so that, you know, the uh, food production can increase by huge amount. So these chemicals are known as agrochemicals because they are used in agriculture. So agro and they are all chemicals. So agrochemicals. But as we have discussed before also that though they might increase the food production but overall they have a negative impact on the environment because they in turn can pollute the soil, they can pollute the nearby water bodies and therefore uh, it is definitely not very advisable to make too much use of these chemicals. Now. What is done to enhance the crop production? So we enrich the soil with the nutrients in the form of manure, fertilizers and we also use insecticides and pesticides to kill insects and pests that might harm crops. So that's what I was telling that firstly we want to uh, destroy or kill all of them which hamper plant growth. For example insects and pests might eat up plants so therefore they might hamper plant growth. So what we do we kill insects and pests by putting insecticides and pesticides. What do these manures and fertilizers do? So manures and fertilizers they increase the nutrient content of the soil. Now as I was mentioning that soil is rich in nutrients like for potassium, sulfur, nitrogen, etc. So just to increase the content of all these nutrients in the soil, what do we do? We additionally put these nutrients into the soil, either in the form of manure or fertilizer. So when we talk about manure, manure is a substance that increases the soil fertility. Now when you look at the process of preparation of manure, you would actually feel that manure is something which has an overall positive impact because manure is prepared by, from decomposition of animal excreta and plant wastes. So manure is basically obtained from wastes of plants and animals. So that's great, right? Because till now we had been talking about how to control air pollution, how to control water pollution and we found that most of these plant and animal wastes give rise to pollution. Now if the wastes can be utilized in a nicer way where the wastes can be uh, decomposed to make manure which in turn is again helpful for the growth of plants. So in that case we are actually recycling the plant and animal wastes. So that's a nice thing to do. So that means manure is a good thing because it kind of recycles the plant and animal wastes and at the same time it also increases the fertility of the soil by increasing the food production. So what is manure made up of? It is made up of organic matter plus nutrient and these, nu these extra nutrients are what we are looking for. So what is its function? So its function is to improve the overall soil structure. That means it, it increases the water holding capacity of the soil. Now if the soil is able to hold good amount of water then what happens? then the plant gets as much water as it needs at any point in time because the soil is holding the necessary water. It helps in drainage. It also avoids water logging. So it, it doesn't allow too much of water to get uh, kind of locked in one particular place because that becomes harmful for the plants. So that means usage of manure has more positive advantages associated with it. So when you talk about its advantages, it is non-toxic, it is not harmful because it is nothing but the decomposed plant and animal wastes. It is eco-friendly because it is not harming the environment. In fact, it is helping the environment. It is helping the environment to get rid of the plant and animal wastes. It is a recycled biological product. Right? So otherwise plants and animal wastes would have been just dumped here and there. So we would have been looking for ways to, you know, kind of uh, decompose them or to dispose them. So this, this way with this process 
all those wastes got utilized as a different product altogether. Next is fertilizer. So fertilizers are commercially produced plant nutrients. So these are basically chemicals and these chemicals are nothing but the nutrients which we directly add into the soil. For example, if you want to add uh, whatever, let's call it, say potassium or phosphorus into the soil. So you just buy a fertilizer which is, which is nothing but the phosphates or the potassium and you just add that directly into the soil. So these would be nothing but, they are nothing but chemicals. So they result in higher yields and healthy plants. So if you compare the result of manure with fertilizer, you would see that application of fertilizers give better yields because you are directly adding that nutrient into the soil. So obviously the output is better in this case. So if you look at this picture on the left hand side, you see uh, a field which is starved by lack of plant food. Whereas on the right hand side, you see a field which is nourished on phosphate and lime. So phosphate and lime, these are nothing but the nutrients and they have been added in the form of fertilizers. So in this case, you see there's so much of greenery on the right side, whereas the left side is like there's almost nothing on the left side. So that way with fertilizers, you can actually improve the yield to a large extent but when you talk about the advantages and disadvantages of fertilizers they actually have both the phases for example if you talk about its advantages it provides nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus and potassium to the soil therefore it results in higher yields if, if given in proper dose so what how much ever amount is required only apply in that much amount so that you get good yields of crop but if you apply it in excess then it might cause it might pollute the soil first thing secondly if fertilizer is applied immediately before rain then it then what might happen then it might cause water pollution as we have seen so rainfall is one way of irrigating the field there are other ways also but make sure that you do not apply fertilizers immediately before any irrigation because if you apply fertilizers and then you irrigated the field then the water will wash away all the fertilizers and take it to the nearby water body thereby causing water pollution in that river or pond Excessive use of fertilizers can spoil soil fertility because organic matter and microorganisms are harmed because as I said that these fertilizers are nothing but chemicals. So if you add too much of chemical into the plant so the, or into the soil, then the soil fertility will get adversely affected. So when we are using fertilizers, we need to make sure that we are using it in proper dose. So if we use it in proper dose, in that case, we will get very good output. At the same time, we will not see much of its negative sides. But if we use it in excess amount, in that case, it will, I mean, one thing is it can cause water pollution. Second thing is it will also spoil the quality of the soil. So the next topic would be insecticides and pesticides. Now, how do they harm the soil? Because just now we learned that insecticides and pesticides will kill the insects and pests which harm the plants. But they can also kill the non-target organisms. So target organisms are the insects and pests. So anything other than insects and pests are the non-target organisms. So basically, what are these insecticides and pesticides? They are some poisonous chemicals which can kill insect and pests. So since they are anyways poisonous chemicals, so they are also capable of killing other organisms. And that is what happens. So even though its job is to kill certain insects and pests, it also ends up kill, uh, killing a lot of other organisms also. So excessive use of insecticides and pesticides can also lead to soil or water pollution because too much chemicals into the soil will spoil the soil fertility and also too much of chemicals if followed by rain like you applied insecticides and pesticides and immediately there was huge rainfall in that case these chemicals might get carried away with rainwater and then pollute the nearby water body. can adversely affect the food chain. So what do we mean by that? Now let's say that the soil has too much of uh, insecticides or pesticides, that is too much of chemicals. Now there are a lot of insects or organisms which feed on the soil particles. For example, earthworm is one such example. So the earthworm will feed on these particles 
which might have chemicals because the soil has so much of chemicals. Now this earthworm might be eaten up by uh, another creature for example the grasshopper eats the earthworm. So what happens? This earthworm actually contains those chemicals. So when this earthworm is consumed by the grasshopper it can also cause diseases in the grasshopper. When the, this grasshopper in turn is eaten up by a bigger bird so the bird is also eating an organism which is kind of uh, infected with chemicals so this can also impact the bird so therefore the entire food chain gets impacted therefore it can destroy the soil ecosystem because in soil also like the way in water we have huge aquatic life huge amounts of plants and animals live in water similarly there are a lot of animals which live in the soil so if the soil itself is polluted or if the soil itself is uh, loaded with so much of chemicals then the entire soil ecosystem will get spoiled. So therefore looking at the advantages and disadvantages of manure, fertilizers, insecticides and pesticides we can say that organic farming would be the best option. What is organic farming? Farming with no or minimum use of chemicals because we see whenever we make use of chemicals even though temporarily the crop yield or the crop productivity improves but in the long run it is not good because it is harmful to the environment. So in organic farming we try to use minimum fertilizers and maximum manure because with manure we really do not have any negative impact but with fertilizers we do have negative impacts like if fertilizer application is followed by rainfall or irrigation it can cause water pollution. Similarly if fertilizers are used in excess that can also spoil the soil quality so but with manures there are no disadvantages associated with it so therefore manure used should be maximized and fertilizer insecticides and pesticides use should be minimized healthy cropping patterns the third thing that can be followed is healthy cropping patterns that means there might be certain crops which grow well in a particular season like we have learned about the rabi crops and the kharib crops so the crops which grow well in that season maybe that time we can have one round of that crop then the next season which is not suitable for that crop in that next season we might plant some other crop which is suitable for that season so those kind of healthy cropping patterns can also improve the farming and it can also improve the quality. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.